What is up my fellow airsoft nerds? Welcome to my apartment. Uh, this video is sponsored by my dog Bo, who as I start talking, he immediately wants attention. Greetings my fellow airsoft nerds, we're gonna try this again. Bo is now sleeping right here, just out of frame, on my shirts. Uh, the next couple weeks, I'm gonna be going to Middleton West event in Colorado. Uh, I think it's the Calmeek Offense, something, something. It's in the Denver area, specifically in a place called Elbert. My understanding is it's their first time at this venue, but I think Milsom West uses it for their 18 whatever, whatever series of events. So it's not new to Airsoft, but it's new to Milsom West players. If you want to follow along on the tax op, we're going to kind of go section by section, line by line, uh, from Nanuma to Manuma. I'm going to tell you what I'm bringing and why. There are a few items that I still need to get, but it's not like mission critical. Starting with the on your person section. I got my top right here. It's the same uh, partisan top that I got through Amped Airsoft a long time ago when this stuff was in stock. This will mostly be what I wear the entire time. I'm gonna be rocking either one of my blue stripy shirts that Bo is sleeping on the other one. You are being a lot right now. Usually, depending on the weather, I would rather stay a little cooler than a little warmer. So I will typically wear just some sort of moisture wicking, like a tank top. I've got a Notre Dame muscle shirt that I've done in previous videos that I always like to wear. For headgear, I've got my standard, my uh, cool green merino wool uh, fleece beanie. Or not fleece beanie, like regular whatever beanie, I guess. Yeah, fleece, sure, who cares? That thing keeps my head pretty warm. What I want to try and find is a green, uh, we used to call them recon wraps. Basically like a, a green do-rag to wear one of the, not just like a schmock because you always try and tie that and it just looks stupid. Just one of the skull caps or a recon wrap that's kind of already pre-wrapped basically. Similar to what they have with like those Tipman wraps. I've had this hat for about a year or so. Uh, I got it to wear for the last Kharkiv event. It's a 60, but it's still, it's kind of tight on me. Uh, especially if I if my hair's grown out a little because Notice like how, th how I just shaved my head a couple days ago, like I bicked my head. If my hair grows out or if it starts to get sweaty or something, this thing's going to get even smaller and already it's kind of not that comfortable for me. I normally wear about a seven and a half in hats. I got a big stupid head. This is a 60. It's tight. So I'm not wearing it. I don't want to take like a regular ball cap feel like that kind of messes with the whole militia thing so I'm probably just gonna do like a, a head wrap because it's gonna be cold I am definitely bringing uh, the Gorka jacket my EMR Gorka jacket that I've had for years or a couple years I should say I've still been trying to find the uh, the partisan pattern Gorka jacket I haven't been able to find it in my size at a price I want to pay I'm, I'm not gonna pay triple its value on a Facebook group just because it's not available Easily. I'm not doing that. Pants I'm rocking for this one are going to be my uh, Odie Green Idol Gear pants. The Idol Gear pants are really solid. This will probably be the first event where I'm not wearing my Partisan pants. Uh, I'm going to switch it up this year for my Militia kit and I'm going to be going green pants with my Partisan top and this will be the same thing that I wear for Bishkek at Victorville later in October. Same Meryl Moabs. Again, I think these are the three uh, these are the non-water resistant waterproof ones. These are just the regular shoes. The weather for that area has apparently been beautiful. There hasn't been any rain. Depending on what the final weight's going to be for my check bag, I might take my waterproof shoes just as a precaution uh, and not actually wear them, but I will have them in the car. My OCD requires me to store things in a series of separate bags. So in this little green one, I have uh, different changes of clothes, so different changes of underoos, extra pairs of socks, and deodorant, a must have for every Milsim autist. In my left sleeve pocket, I'm gonna have this little guy. It's a red dog tag, a little bigger than the standard Milspec dog tags, uh, but it's my med card. You can't really see it from there, that's fine. Here, can you see better if I put it against my head? Uh, in the military, red usually denotes medical, like a medical card. So if you have allergies or anything, you would wear that on your regular dog tags along with your name and service number and blah, blah, blah. I have one right here in my left sleeve pocket, and then I wear another one on my Smirsh, which I will show in a minute. 
My Smirsh is also where I keep my wristwatch because I don't like wearing watches, so I'll just keep them up here uh, with my red LED light. I got a Right in the Rain notepad. I've always loved these things. Uh, I've actually started doing some, uh, some notes that are both event specific and leadership specific. Uh, so basic salute stuff, uh, troop leading procedures, Bo's big butt, uh, lakes reports, different stuff like that, just for a quick reference notes, just in case I need them. Uh, but I do always have this on me. I like to get these smaller ones so you could either fit them in an arm pocket or a pouch a lot easier. They do make them like a lot bigger. I've never liked those. They really only fit in a cargo pocket on your pants. For load bearing equipment, I still have my tried and true Smirsh and I have my dog. This is the same Smirsh that I've been using for years. Uh, here's my wristwatch and uh, here's the other med card, which is also of note on the left side. And here's my single red LED light, uh, different settings, the strobe setting, all that other cool stuff. Again, any OG GWAT veterans probably remember this thing because we used to keep it clipped right here on the, uh, on the upper lapel. I'll usually only take three magazines. Uh, so I'll have one of the gun and then usually two in a pouch and everything else is for like snacks and stuff like that, honestly, because uh, I'm down to 217, I'm still a fat bitch. I switched it up to OG canteen setups instead of the uh, traditional like camelback thing, just because I thought that'd be like kind of a cool retro militia thing to do. It's not superior to a camelback, but I really like the uh, LBV style with canteens. Usually my butt pouch, depending on the weather and the time of the day, uh, I've got like random stuff. So I have like extra eye pro, the good ones, uh, some of the IR stuff if we use it, or I'll, again, I'll keep some snacks in here depending on what I got going on. My night vision or my jacket, depending on what time it is and what the weather's doing. My helmet I got is a Wendy bump. Uh, it's just the carbon, it's just a light bump helmet. Got my Agilite uh, counterweight holder right here, which is pretty cool. With my Wilcox mount, uh, whatever the sexy one is, the G36 something, I don't remember. It's on my Instagram. The same PVS 14 Wilcox mount that everyone else puts on their helmet. How's that? These are my PVS Gen 3s. I got them from US Night Vision. They have the Elbit tubes in them. Uh, I got white foss because I love my eyes. Attached to it is the uh, new gen, the currently sold Brown Bear PVS-14 recording device. Big difference is it's got the self-contained battery and a uh, little button right here. Uh, I am still struggling to figure out what the stupid, like, stroby things mean. I'm still trying to figure out when the hell it's recording and when it's not. So what I'm probably just going to do anyway is go back to the old gen brown bear. Uh, the quote unquote drawback to this is it has to be plugged in to something. So what a lot of guys were doing is there would be like a USB battery pack in here and they plug their brown bear into it. And then as soon as this is plugged in, it starts recording. Uh, the only thing you need to be aware of is it records in five minute intervals. The, the old one records in five minute intervals. So if you just turned it on and immediately got into some cool three minutes worth of content, you have to basically walk around and let it record for another two minutes. So it, it auto saves backlogs. I don't know what the appropriate term is for that. This is the blue light and it's still hard for me to figure out like, is it recording? Is it not cord? I don't, there have been plenty of times where I thought I was recording and I wasn't, and I missed out on a lot of cool night, uh, night game footage at the uh, airsoft ministry. The arm, this little guy is a uh, noise fighter arm and I really like it. Uh, a lot of guys are starting to say this is better than the old Wilcox arm. The only thing that I still need to get is a uh, Cold Harbor uh, lens protector, like a, a clear lens cover. I have some of the SAC lenses that uh, this company sells, that US Night Vision sells. I've got a couple of those. I don't know how well those are gonna do up, but also, again, the, the chances of me getting shot in the nods is pretty low. So I feel like if I take like three SAC lenses, I'll be fine if I order my Cold Harbor lens and it doesn't get here in time. I'll be okay. New Ruck reveal for this season, and probably all the seasons going forward, I got a large Alice pack. A lot of guys go with the medium and that's fine. I like the Alice because it has a few more extra exterior pouches. I don't really care about the extra space. You don't really need that. I love 
organizing and sorting things into their own bags and pouches. So my OCD was like, get the large. I did do some of the OV innovations, uh, aftermarket modifications. So you'll notice these are now clips. These cool little clip devices instead of the old uh, like tension system, like an old belt. I didn't really like those. And I did the same thing for the main pouch as well. So instead of that one continuous tension strap or whatever the hell it's called, I just clip and unclip this. And I think that's way more convenient. I also put on the OV Innovations uh, drag handle. I could have made my own out of like 550, blah, blah, blah. Look, man, I'm lazy. I'm not going to do that. The only thing I got to do is reconnect my shoulder straps, which are actually in really good condition, so I didn't need to replace them. I just got to pop them back on because you have to disconnect the shoulder straps to get the uh, handle connected in. And then I got to tape up, you know, some straps and stuff like that. And baby, we're good to go. I do need to hit up Action Surplus in the Orangeville area of Sacramento. It's an amazingly priced store. I do need to get an e-tool and an e-tool carrier, and I'm probably going to mount that onto the side all in with everything, I don't think I'm gonna exceed 40 pounds. I will probably not exceed too much past like 35, if that. Uh, I'm not, I'm thinking I'm gonna take a chair. I might take a chair, I might, I might not. I probably won't just cause I have to check all this stuff in. Here's how I'm gonna transport all of that. I forgot I had this. This is kind of like what replaced the duffel bag for the army. Uh, but it's big enough that I can put that whole rucksack in here and then all my other odds and ends and bits and bobbins and such, uh, with the exception of my gun case, but like all my rucksack stuff, I can put it right in here. I don't have to worry about it falling out in transit. It's completely, well, not completely secured, but I mean, it's all pretty well secure in here and I just lug this thing around. And as long as it's not over, what is it? 50, 50 pounds. 50 pound weight limit for check bags, and I get two free ones with Southwest because I'm not a poor. Some of the extra stuff I've got, my headlamp, which has white and red light, and it's rechargeable, which is pretty cool. And uh, two pieces of 550 cord with some D-Links on the end of it. I don't know if we're allowed, I assume we're allowed to dig fighting positions. If we are, we will probably dig fighting positions, uh, in which case that tarp will probably turn into the top of a fighting position or maybe we'll make some kind of shelter, but you can't tell me that two of these bad boys aren't gonna come in handy at some point. Just kinda depends on how nerdy we wanna get. In my little kitchen bag, I have my long camping plastic spoon, which I absolutely love, and I did something a little bit different uh, for my cook system, because I wanted to consolidate it down. For years, I was using the Jetboil Minimo. This thing's pretty big, like, not small at all and its little cooking system. This worked pretty well. This is a little bit bigger than I want. After doing a bunch of Mills and Wests with this, I realized I could probably scale this down a little and save a little bit of space. Not really weight, just kind of space. So I went out and got the Jetboil Zip, which is this guy. Notice they're about the same. Let me take the... Notice the zip's a little bit taller, but if you look at the diameter, like there's definitely a size difference. Here's what I didn't know, and this is the ignition system for the Minimo, and you see it has this little igniter button right here. The one for the zip doesn't. So it has the uh, the valve, like an outlet valve or the, the gas valve or whatever for how much propane you want to let through, but you have to have an external fire source for the, the uh, system that the zip comes with. So what I did was I just took the Minimo's uh, ignition system or fire system, or whatever you want to call it. So what I did is I took the Minimo ignition system and my zip and just made a Minimo zip, a Zipmo. Uh, I went on their website. I was not able to find just this cup. I wasn't able to find it anywhere. They have uh, just the cup for whatever's in the middle of this, uh, the Java, I think, and you can buy it in like the American flag pattern or blue or whatever. Uh, but just to purchase the zip cup as a standalone item isn't an option. So I said, screw it. I had 50 bucks in REI cash. So this cost me like 40 bucks or something like that. This co it cost not a whole lot of money, especially with how much extra REI cash I had. So I just bought a completely new uh, Jetboil Zip system, like the complete package. 
I'm using the cup system from one and the mini Mose igniter system and boom, I got a Mozip. I've got my Kelty sleeping bag. This is the same one that I took to the first insurgency I went to, the very first Mills and West event. This is a lot thinner than that big orange REI bag that I have that hunker down. Because the weather's not gonna be below like 40 degrees at night, uh, I'll be fine. So I've got my sleeping bag, which I guess we could basically just call a summer bag. Same water and windproof bivy bag that I've had for years and years and years, this little guy. In case, for whatever reason, if I have misjudged how cold it's gonna be at night, I still have my Whoopi, which I don't wanna get out, but I have my double insulated Whoopi inside of this bag. If, for whatever reason, that is not enough, it's probably snowing or doing something else crazy, but I also have a poncho, and you can always use a poncho as another emergency inner layer to keep all your body heat in. Again, I don't think it's gonna be that bad. I'm pretty sure I'll be just fine wearing normal clothes, sleeping bag, inside bivy bag, it, just in case I feel like being a total bitch, I have my whoopee. I will be wearing uh, my mechanics gloves, which I have in my Smirsh. Uh, I have extra socks. I have a big, uh, big outer sock that I use that I wear to help keep my feet warm. And once I get into Denver, I'm gonna pick up jet boil fuel because I, you can't take propane on an airplane because I'm flying there. Uh, a couple extra snack items and then uh, some hot hands, just in case. I'm only gonna take one poncho. It's not supposed to rain. If it was going to rain, I would take a second poncho uh, so we could start setting up shelters and stuff like that. But I don't need to. It looks like it's gonna be a beautiful day. And of course, no Milson West sleep kit is complete without, ba bum the Nemo switchback. I love this thing. I'm not going away from this. For this event, I wanted to get the uh, Marine sleep system that all zips inside of each other. And when you close the bivy bag up, it has like a little netted mesh ventilation thing, which the army bag doesn't. I got this bivy bag, so it was like the one I got in the army. So you're totally cocooned in. Uh, again, you, condensation gets in your face, blah, blah, bring the thing over your head. I didn't have enough time or money because I had to fix my truck. So hopefully for the Victorville event, I'll have a completely new sleep system. The downside to this one that I have right now, and I've said this before in a couple other videos, is these things just sort of free spin inside of each other. Whereas the, the military versions, both the Marine and the Army one, they zip inside of each other. So you're not just sort of like spinning around in, inside of it and getting like your feet all tangled up. It's really uncomfortable and it's just kind of annoying. It doesn't affect your sleep, but when you're trying to get up and do something quickly in the middle of the night, it's kind of pain in the ass. I am flying to Colorado, which means I need a TSA compliant uh, case. So the Specna one is TSA compliant. Inside it has my amazing ENL AKM. I am exclusively running Titan batteries because who cares about anything that's not a Titan battery? I don't give a damn. I'm probably only gonna take three magazines, so I'll probably leave this one because it's broken at the bottom. Uh, this is my IR laser, and this is the LCT wood dong. This does not count as an attachment for Milsim West, so this is like a zero attachment, which means I can keep my IR laser on and not have to take it off during the daytime. Everyone has always got their videos, their takes, and their stories on how to fly in the continental United States with an airsoft gun. I've only done it one other time uh, and you just treat it, I treat it like a firearm. So I take it in the case, double lock it so no one can get to it, limit the ease of access, blah, blah, blah. Now the reason I do that is because I, lo I love my airsoft gun. I've put money into it, a lot of time into it. So I don't want some dumbass to just chuck it up into the check bag section where God knows what's gonna happen to it, even with this case. So I TSA check it, so a human being has to carry it basically from station to station with a little bit more tender love and care, and then I go pick it up. So that way it doesn't just slide out with some other schmucks working a job they probably don't care about and whether that sucks. They're gonna unload the plane, throw my gun, just chucking it over, just chucking. Like, here's a no, here's a heavy case, boom. We've all seen the videos online. 
I don't want to put my AKM through that. So that's everything I'm taking to Colorado. Uh, I'll do a follow-up video into how the whole event went and like how my gear held up and so on and so forth. Uh, 